Hey guys, hope you're doing well. The Network Berg here. So it's another Friday video or Friday, and I decided to create a bit of a personal video. It's going to be a mixture between a story time video and just a general how to become a network engineer type of video. Even though the YouTube is flooded with those types of videos, I just want to give you guys my take. Uh, what my experiences has been as a network engineer and what I can typically recommend that worked for me on my path as a network engineer. But just a disclaimer, everybody's paths are a little bit different. Everybody has different backgrounds. Everybody has different starting points. Everybody has different expectations. So it's very hard to set a, um, let's say, a correct path because everything is so random, right? <laughs> but I can definitely tell you what type of things help me and can possibly help you in your own journey. So let's dive into the video. All right, so let's get into a little bit of a story time video. I'm trying to make this not too long. I've redone this a few times. Uh, but I just want to explain who I am, my background, and how I fell into network engineering. Now, I am the network berg, obviously, or better known as Johnny to my friends. And I have always, since I came out of school, uh, been into network engineering. It's been my career. It's been my passion. It's been something I enjoy a lot. And the reason I've enjoyed it so much is even when I was a kid like a teenager me and my friends would get together we'd pick up our computers go to somebody's house or even my own house we'd connect all our machines onto a hub and we'd have to set up some basic network connectivity so that we could LAN. so that is where it all came from initially because we needed to figure out how to LAN. so this is how i learned about ipv4 and how to assign ips and all that good stuff but it was just a very basic way of me and my friends to enjoy ourselves and have fun now, besides just having fun with my friends at the LAN, the internet was also a very new thing to us because uh, most households might have had a, a asymmetric line or a dial-up line, you know, your telephone line, and they would use these telephone lines to connect to the internet. And that's also where I first connected to the internet because I put my dial-up, uh, my, my cable into my dial-up modem. I click the connect button and you'd hear that annoying screech that the dial-up modem would make but it helped me also just learn about how we can connect to the internet so i had those very basic skills of computing and very bas basic networking skills which helped me so quite a bit because my brother um, had been working for a large-ish isp for i think a few months maybe a year and he gave me a call out of nowhere he said hey johnny do you maybe want to come and do an interview with these people because you're not really doing anything right now and it's just going to maybe be a weekend thing so come and hear what they have to say and make a decision based off of that so i said okay i i'd like to try the stuff because i know my brother's been doing a lot of it stuff and i also want to get into that so i went for the interview the person that was interviewing me was very nice um, she explained to me exactly what the position would be about and it is obvious why they chose to interview me as a new young student type of guy because i didn't have any dependents which meant that the role that they wanted to give me was perfect for me because it was essentially a monitoring engineer or a monitoring technician or whatever you want to call them um, that would be doing the graveyard shift now if you know what the graveyard shift is i also pity you because you know how rough it can be because it feels like the the dead end of the night and nothing is happening but that also counts to your benefit and i'll explain what the graveyard shift is in a second but it made sense to hire me based off of that because hey i'd be monitoring the company's network and i would be not impacting any family life because i i didn't have my own family aside from my mom and dad and brother so i said okay cool let's give this a try i signed up with the company and instead of it becoming just a weekend job it was a full-time thing that they uh, provided me with it, it was the permanent deal so i started out as a monitoring engineer so i was given the opportunity to look at all of our digit lines or lease lines and i would monitor them every night for hours on end from 11 to 8 and i would just basically be responsible for checking if any of these lines go off and if you don't know what a lease line is think of this as a pre-fiber era uh, they they could go up to like i think 512 maybe one megabit but 
some of them were only 64k and people would pay out of their noses for those lines but it's because of the slas and services that you would receive by having these type of lines they were catered for businesses before fiber was a thing really and I was just responsible for making sure that these lines didn't go down and if they went down i would log faults with an upstream provider just to let them know hey these links have gone down what's up guys and then we would have a back and forth look at stuff like equipment and power and they would eventually send out a team and fix the issue and that was that now besides monitoring the network i would also have the responsibility of taking the occasional call from you know those late night early morning browsers that um connected and they couldn't connect and I was responsible for also just troubleshooting those type of issues and what's nice is if I couldn't figure out an issue because I was a new person to networking I knew how to do dial up and how basic IPv4 works but if somebody phones me with an ADSL issue even though the principle is exactly the same I lost my mind because I was a new person to the field I, I couldn't fully grasp how a, a solution like ADSL worked yet but given the exposure to be dealing with these types of faults helped me learn because i was able to be put under the pressure to figure out the issues and i would go over the standby person with the issues and it just grew me as an individual now i stayed at that company for quite a while there was some ups and downs with the company but i was promoted various times up until the point where i reached the position of um, let's say a premium desk engineer and it was really awesome because at that point but this i'm talking about like eight nine maybe ten years i don't know how long i actually worked for the company exactly i think it was maybe eight years total um but over those years i've been placed in various departments and i've worked with various solutions and over that course of period it grew me into the type of network engineer that i am today i got exposure into the basic stuff of how tcp ip works i've learned a lot about firewalling i learned about voice i learned a little bit about um, you know just reporting in general creating certain reports for customers and giving that stuff to them it was a heck of a ride but that was all theory because i'm going to shock you now in all that time period that i've worked with all of those different solutions even fiber everything that you can think of even satellite connections i was still pretty much a child when it came to networking because I've never even went into a server room I never knew what was going on in there it was like a mystical land so after those eight years I actually left the company to go work for another enterprise company so it was no longer an ISP but I was going to be the network manager for this company and I was actually very excited because I, I thought hey I knew my stuff I'm down with the theory um, I can do anything that these guys want me to do. I aced my interview with them and, you know, I was so excited. And the first day that I was standing in the data center where all of their equipment was housed, I was thinking to myself, what the heck is actually happening here? And that's because I never took the time to actually properly physically look at what equipment looks like, how things connect with each other. So I was a little bit of a lost lamb but since i was the network manager i was given leeway to be in the data center obviously because i needed to be there and then i could basically map out what each component in a rack a cabinet was doing because that's what i would do i would bring up visio or a similar program you can use draw.io these days completely free and i would map out my network cabinets so there was five of them in that data center and i would in essence say exactly what is in each slot what it's responsible for, uh, if there's a switch, which ports are connecting to what, what is uplinking where. And that gave me a very good understanding of actually what is happening inside of a server rack or let, let's, let's not say server rack, let's just call it a rack because sometimes you put your network gear in there as well. And that really grew me even more because I got this physical exposure besides the theory that I had before. And this allowed me to understand the heart of a network so besides just knowing how to route the traffic i got a physical feel for the network and i sort of wish i was doing it the other way around because that is why i envy a lot of people that come from like a cabling background or so and then move into networking because you guys already understand the whole like you you guys are there from the layer one process from the moment that cable gets put down gets into the switch because many of the times the cabling vendor might also do the patching 
you'll patch it into a patch panel and then from the patch panel you'll bring it into a switch and i really admire because you guys get to see that process from the ground up and then usually only once it's patched into the switch there is when my process starts and you'd configure the switch you configure routing you configure any firewalling that you need and then from there off you go now that was my key role for about three or so years and then tragedy struck i was actually placed on the chopping block so to speak there was some stuff that happened and i unfortunately needed to leave the company um on good terms not not on bad terms i'm sure if any of my ex colleagues are watching you guys know and i was actually given a opportunity where i'm currently residing as the lead network engineer there because um they had an open um, <laughs> a vacancy i don't want to say an open sea and this gave me even more leeway to grow because instead of just managing my enterprise network or doing the theory stuff that i did with the initial company i worked with now i was actually at the helm of solutions i was building the network i was doing everything with the network i was setting up cloud-based networks I, I was figuring out mpla solutions for customers so this gave me the biggest growth spurt in my career so far because now i was actually at the head of the network doing everything from the very top so i was responsible or am responsible for all the things like interconnections and bgp peering mpls configs various types of vrf setups you know kind of weird things that i never thought about doing like i've worked on it when i was at the previous two well the first company i would definitely work on stuff like a vrf but i don't know why how it was set up how it was configured i just worked on it but at my current position i'm able to do all of this amazing stuff and i've really really enjoyed it a lot so that is just my <laughs> my career in a quick highlight that i just want to point out how it's helped me grow because i've taken certain paths i started out very small and then i typically grew into a bigger type of network engineer over the years so how are we going to get you to become a network engineer now this is a nearly impossible question for me to answer because we all are currently in different paths in our lives now what i mean about that is you might be in the position that i was where you're a new person coming out of school and then it's easy for you to get into a entry-level it position and learn the way that i did or you might be somebody that's already midway through your career you're thinking about changing careers um, let's see your late 20s late 30s maybe even early 40s maybe you're an accountant wanting to get into networking then things are obviously going to be a lot different for you because if you are going to join as a tier one support engineer for a new isp but you are used to a bigger salary then that's obviously going to affect your quality of life and that's just going to cause some friction in your home life because now you're suddenly not bringing in as much money as usual and you might have to move into a smaller place or buy less food or have less money for entertainment so it's definitely a weird stick to balance so if you are one of those let's say older generations that's looking to get into networking then there's some things that i can suggest to maybe help you get a more intermediate position and the big thing that i want to stress is make sure that you go over your studies and actually understanding what you're learning don't just read the concept and learn it in memory try and understand what you're doing with the concepts get your certification specifically i'd like you to try and get the network plus or n plus certification through comptia reason being is it goes quite in depth in detail on ipv and or tcp ip which is what we work on as network engineers and tcp ip has been around for decades it's older than what i am and i still work with it so it's not just something that's new and it's probably not going to go away anytime soon because we've learned how to build our networks around it be it tcp ipv4 or v6 whatever it is it's just kind of how our networking is engraved now there's also certain protocols that still work exactly the same like ospf like bgp they might have new versions that introduce a, a few different things like for ipv6 to connect but in essence these things stay pretty much the same for very long periods of time 
there might just be some new solutions that come in like python and scripting and automation and all those things but we'll tackle them as we go so what i want you to understand is get your network plus so you can get the fundamentals down because the fundamentals are so important after the fundamentals then you can start looking at some vendor specific certification now a lot of you viewers or my viewers are microtech fans because i mainly cover microtech stuff on the channel so yes you can go for your mtcna and that would definitely have a lot of benefits for you However, if you're looking to become a network engineer, then I would definitely suggest something like the CCNA or the Cisco Certified Network Engineer or Associate. I think it's actually what the A is for. Um, reason being is it's very good and it's got a broad understanding of networking as a whole. It's not just because it's Cisco, but it, it gets into networking. So it helps you understand networking. It's just got a little bit of a difficulty achieving because the the requirement to pass your ccna is a bit higher and there is some finicky stuff to writing the exam that you might not have when you go for a microtech certification but it's definitely a long-term investment but it should be something that you're willing to make if you want to get into that industry because you're going to learn a lot about different stuff especially the programming stuff that's coming in now and besides your studies which is definitely those entry-level certs for the vendors it's also going to be labbing now you need to be getting that hands-on experience you need to work with it and it can either be on physical hardware which i think is a great thing for somebody that's totally new to it because otherwise you're going to end up in the position i was where i i did all the theory stuff for like eight years but i never knew how physical stuff worked then if you get the physical equipment, then you can connect everything. You can typically, you'll just want a switch or two and a router and the rest you can learn. I can assure you that's probably all you need is two switches, the router, and maybe your PC and a laptop to connect to do some stuff with. And you'll be able to emulate so many different things with physical equipment. You'll be able to do stuff like duplex mismatches and CRC errors and stuff that you can't really get done on a virtual environment. However, I will stress that I personally love labbing on virtual environments like EVNG or GNS3. Reason being is we can create some pretty complex and scaled networks. We can bring up our networks as much as we want. So instead of just having two switches, we can bring in 50 switches and 10 routers, even though you probably don't want to do that, but the possibilities are endless, but you can learn really any concept or theory that you want. So for the theory side of networking, I definitely recommend virtual equipment. And if you want to learn more about how the physical aspects of stuff work, then get some hardware so you can see how everything plugs in and learn a little bit about those cabling issues you might run into because that's not typically an issue you'll see on EVE and it's going to freak you out the first day that you need to troubleshoot some CRC errors on a device. Another thing that I'd recommend besides that is patience. So I think that is another big point I want to make is you're not instantly just going to get to the top of the helm, be the lead network engineer, be the architect, be whatever. I mean, it can happen, but realistically, it's going to take some time to get to those places and maybe see um, different sets, maybe so that your work hours can change or your salary can be adjusted and all that stuff. It's not just going to be a, an instant process. So it is a long-term game. So be prepared for that. Uh, even if you're jumping into an intermediate position, you're still going to have to work quite a while to get um, up to a certain, I don't want to say standard, but to reach your goals because you need to set your goals. What is actually your end goal besides, do you just want to be a network engineer or do you maybe one day want to become a network architect or do you want to grow and become the chief technical officer for some company, you know, or do you just want to get that experience as a network engineer and then start your own company and then sell services as a network engineer or do different types of work. <laughs> when I say work, I mean like contract stuff or, you know, uh, contractor stuff where they phone you up and ask you to come and help them. Even though I typically don't do that myself, I've received plenty of messages asking me, hey, can you maybe help us? We're willing to pay. And typically I will revert these people to other associates that do contract or con um, contractor work, but the possibilities are there. So you need to also just set your expectations and what your goals are regarding becoming a network engineer and then keep at it. Because just like starting my YouTube channel, it's going to take patience and you just need to keep working at it. 
and you're gonna have a heck of a time because i i hope i said it earlier in the video but i'm just gonna stress it here it's probably one of the most fulfilling jobs that you can ever do it's one of it's such an awesome career you are literally building the roads for communication you are making it so that we can all talk to each other like this so you can see this video on youtube or send those emails or connect to the cloud services without us network engineers those services would not be possible and the world would probably still be a very strange place so i i really love networking i love the internet and i love how much it's grown us as a species so i'm looking forward to seeing how much networking impacts our lives in the next even 10 to 20 years because let's face it knowledge has become freely available because of networks and network engineering so i'm going to end off the video with that i hope i've given you some insight in who i am and how to potentially get yourself into a, a state to get into network engineering and i'll see you guys in the next video bye